Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 10th of August. Indian capital witnesses steep rise in COVID-19 cases. Positivity rate zooms past 11%. Protests erupt against proposed 15 constitutional amendment in Pakistan administered Kashmir. And Bangladesh's power minister says foreign reserves are good once a repeat of Lankan crisis. And now for all the details. Indian capital New Delhi has been witnessing a steep rise in COVID-19 infections with active case load at 8,506 in the city as of Wednesday, after 1,022 fresh cases were recorded in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate stood at 15.41% in New Delhi while seven deaths were recorded. Meanwhile, the active cases across India stood at 128,261, Health Ministry data showed. Dr. Suresh Kumar, Medical Director at New Delhi's LNJP Hospital, said that rate of hospital admission has also increased, with a large number of children among the patients. The senior doctor said the new subvariant BA 2.75 has been detected in a study report of 90 samples sent for genome sequencing. The subvariant has more transmissibility, which infects even those with antibodies, he said. Meanwhile, the Indian government on Wednesday approved Biological is Corbovax as a precaution dose for those above 18 years fully vaccinated with either Covishield or Covaxin. Our last one week, uh, the number of COVID cases are increasing day by day. And we have seen the positivity rate going up more than 15%. And number of uh, indoor hospitalization is also increasing. Right now, we have 71 patients in the Loknak Hospital. Majority of these patients are stable. Only two patients are on ventilator and uh, we have seen that this time also uh, the children are also getting hospitalization. A major tragedy was averted on Wednesday after security forces detected an improvised explosive device in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, just days ahead of the country's 75th Independence Day on August 15. Police said a bomb disposal squad was immediately rushed to the Tahab crossing area and the IED was diffused in a controlled blast. An encounter was also underway in Badgam district on Wednesday in which at least three terrorists had been neutralized till the last reports came in. The slain terrorists were identified as members of Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit, Jammu and Kashmir police said. Meanwhile, security was beefed up across the country, including in the border areas of India and Bangladesh, to avert any untoward incidents ahead of the independence day. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI leader Shahbaz Gill was sent to a two-day police remand by a court in Islamabad on Wednesday after he was arrested on charges of sedition and inciting the public against the state institutions. Interior Minister Rana Salaullah earlier said that Gill had attempted to incite mutiny in Pakistan army ranks while speaking to a private TV news channel. Criticism of the powerful army has long been seen as a red line in Pakistan. A district and sessions court in Pakistani capital Islamabad on Wednesday granted police two-day physical remand of opposition PTI party leader Shahbaz Gill a day after he was arrested by police on charges of sedition and inciting the public against the state institutions. Former Prime Minister and PTI party chief Imran Khan had earlier termed the arrest of Gill, his chief of staff, as an incident of abduction, while the party called it a fascist act. Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah in a press conference on Tuesday said, Gill was arrested for making an attempt to incite mutiny in Pakistan army ranks while speaking to TV news channel ARY News on Monday. Meanwhile, ARY News on Wednesday on Twitter claimed 
Its head of news, Ahmad Yusuf, was also arrested hours after the channel was taken off air in parts of the country for allegedly airing seditious content. Ranked among the world's most dangerous countries for journalists, criticism of the powerful army in Pakistan has long been seen as a red line. Moving on. Kashmiri activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has raised concerns that the proposed 15th constitutional amendment by Pakistan government will revoke the special status of Pakistan-administered Kashmir, while curtailing the rights of the residents. A series of protests have also erupted against the legislation in the illegally occupied region. Prominent Kashmiri political activist Dr. Amjad Ayub Mirza has slammed the proposed 15th constitutional amendment by Pakistan government that he said will revoke the rights and the independent status of the illegally occupied region of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. This comes as protests have also erupted against the legislation that aims to recreate defunct overarching Kashmir Council which will deem the hold of Kashmir political parties as anti-democratic in the region. Political leader and locals have alleged the stooge government in the region by conspiring with Islamabad is acting like terrorists instead of being their protectors. On top of everything, it is the 15th amendment that is going to uh, disempower Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir government totally. I mean, what uh, trivial powers we have right now are also going to go out of the window. In addition to the 15th Amendment, protests have also raged against Tourism Authority Act, heavy taxation on electricity and inflation in the region. Locals say the local government only helps Islamabad to fill its treasuries through economic depredations, while attempts are being made to grab their lands and rights. A news from Afghanistan. Children malnutrition has always been a problem in Afghanistan, but according to UNICEF Afghanistan, the situation has deteriorated over the past year under the Taliban's rule. Malnutrition wards in dozens of public hospitals in the country are filled up and busy, as families say they could not afford to feed their children properly due to poverty. At the malnutrition ward of the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, all the 40 beds are filled up. The children are being treated for various conditions of malnutrition, but their families all share a similar story. They could not afford to feed their children properly due to poverty. Medical staff have been doing double shifts in the past year due to the increased number of children being admitted to the hospital. Children's malnutrition has always been a problem in Afghanistan. But according to UNICEF Afghanistan, the situation has deteriorated over the past year under the Taliban's rule. It estimated 1.1 million Afghan children under the age of five are expected to suffer from severe malnutrition in 2022. <laughs> The Taliban seized power in August last year as the last US-led troops withdrew after 20 years of war with the hardline Islamists. The pullout and cutoffs by the United States and other funders of direct assistance on which the impoverished nation depended upon worsened the financial and humanitarian crisis in the country leading to the economy collapsing and millions enduring food shortages. The Taliban has asked for their frozen assets to be returned to them. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Ranil Vikramasinghe was elected new president after his successor Gotabaya Rajpaksa fled the country and resigned following mass protests triggered by his mishandling of the economy. Despite change in the government, pro-democracy activists are continuing the agitation, demanding the release of detained demonstrators and new elections. Hundreds of pro-democracy activists, including monks, marched to Independence Square in Sri Lanka's commercial capital Colombo on Tuesday, 
demanding the release of detained demonstrators and new elections. Activists accused the government of cracking down on protesters who helped topple the government of then-President Gotabaya Rajpaksa last month. Gotabaya resigned from the presidency, becoming the first Sri Lankan president to quit mid-term. The protesters also demanded an end to the state of emergency imposed by the government of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Vikramasinghe was voted in as acting president in Sri Lanka by lawmakers on July 20th, with many hoping his long experience in government could help pull the country out of a crippling economic and political crisis. He took charge despite public anger with the ruling elite after months of severe shortages of fuel, food and medicines. Meanwhile, reports suggest that ousted president Kotabe Rajpaksa is expected to arrive in Thailand on Thursday, seeking temporary shelter in a second Southeast Asian country after fleeing his island nation last month amid mass protests. Rajpaksa fled to Singapore on July 14th via Maldives following unprecedented unrest triggered by Sri Lanka's worst economic crisis in seven decades. Amid raging protests against skyrocketing fuel prices in Bangladesh, Nasrul Hamid, the Power, Energy and Mineral Resource Minister speaking exclusively to ANI on Wednesday said that Dhaka won't see a similar fate to the Sri Lankan crisis because the country has a substantial amount of foreign reserves. Hamid clarified that we have sufficient reserves of petroleum products and good supply chain in the country by December 2022. This comes at a time when Dhaka is seeing a wave of agitations as people have launched protests against the government's decision to hike fuel prices last week. Fuel prices were increased by over 50%, the highest increase since the country's independence in 1971. A move that will trim the country's subsidy burden but put more pressure on inflation that is already running above 7%. The South Asian country's 416 billion US dollars economy has been one of the fastest growing in the world for years. However, soaring energy and food prices due to the Russia-Ukraine war have inflated its import bill, forcing the government to seek loans from global agencies. Ahead of the Hindu sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan, women and young girls were seen thronging markets to buy the decorative sacred threads called Rakhis for their brothers in India. The festival occupies a special place in the Hindu culture and is celebrated with much fervor and gaiety by people across communities. Ahead of the Hindu sibling festival or Raksha Bandhan that commemorates the bond between brother and sister, women and young girls were seen flocking markets in India's western Surat city to buy threads called Rakhis for their brothers. Rakhi is the symbolic holy thread a sister ties ceremoniously on the wrist of a brother as a mark of revered bondage between them. A wide variety of rakhis were seen available in the markets. Markets buzzed with activity as customers went from one shop to another to choose from a thread of multi-hued rakhis. I have bought for the children. In this market, there is a lot of variety of rakhis. I am seeing a lot of rakhis in this market. I have seen a lot of rakhis in this market. I have seen a lot of rakhis in this market. And its name is Rakhi Mela. It is like the Rakhi Mela. Meanwhile, school students began Raksha Badan celebrations with soldiers of India's paramilitary border security forces at Atari Waga border, the road check post between India and Pakistan in northern Punjab state. Filled with bliss and joy, the students tied Rakhis on the wrists of security personnel as a gesture of gratitude. हम बागा बॉर्डर आए हैं जवानों को राखी बांधने क्योंकि वो भी हमारे भाई हैं क्योंकि वो हमारी रक्षा करते हैं तो वो अपने फैमिली से दूर हैं तो हमें उनको उनके फैमिली की कमी महसूस नहीं होने देनी चाहिए इसलिए हम उनके साथ ही फेस्टिवल सेलिब्रेट करने आए हैं रक्षा बंधन इस सेलिब्रेटेड विथ मच फर्वर एंड शेयर फुलनेस बाय पीपल अक्रॉस कम्युनिटीज 
The origin of Raksha Bandhan is said to date back several centuries to the era of Hindu queen Rani Rupmati, who in course of a battle sent a Rakhi thread to a Mughal ruler Humayu requesting protection from the enemy. The festival falls on August 11 this year. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.